He was once a football player who transitioned into a successful insurance executive, while she, an enchanting cheerleader and former beauty pageant queen, they shared a deep bond as college sweethearts. Together, they embarked on a journey that resulted in a loving marriage and the blessing of three wonderful boys. Their idyllic family life included regular escapes to the Bahamas, extravagant yacht excursions, and even the thrill of private jet travel. However, the narrative took a dramatic twist on July 16th when she, along with her boyfriend, faced arrest on charges of attempting to murder her husband. This is the peculiar case of Lindsay Shiver. Welcome to TCC. A quick disclaimer, the content presented in this video relies on publicly accessible information from multiple sources. Given that the case is relatively recent, everything discussed herein is considered alleged until all facts are substantiated in a court of law. Lindsay Shiver was born on October 28, 1986 in Doden City, Alabama, to her parents Andy and Cecilia Shirley, Andy a sales manager, and Cecilia a homemaker. She grew up with her two brothers, Brandon and Craig. Lindsay's educational journey took her to Houston Academy, a private school in Dothan, where she excelled as a cheerleader and became a member of the National Honor Society. In 2005, at the age of 19, she graduated from high school and was crowned Miss Houston County in the same year. She also participated in the National Peanut Festival pageant and secured the first runner-up position. Her pursuit of education continued at Auburn University in 2006, where she majored in elementary education. During her time at Auburn, she was an active member of the cheerleading team. This is where she would meet her future husband, Robert Shiver, a long snapper for the Auburn Tigers football team. Their relationship blossomed, leading to their marriage in 2009. Lindsay completed her degree at Auburn University in 2010 and embarked on a teaching career at Northside Methodist Academy in Dothan, where she dedicated herself to educating kindergarten and first grade students. She earned the admiration of both students and colleagues, consistently receiving commendations from parents. Beyond her professional life, Lindsay had a passion for travel, with a particular fondness for the Bahamas, making it her family's frequent vacation destination. Lindsay delighted in sharing her adventures, capturing moments with friends and family, which she frequently posted on her Instagram profile, amassing over 2,000 followers. Lindsay and Robert's family grew with the arrival of three sons, Grayson in 2012, Landon in 2013, and Rhett in 2019. The Shiver family settled into their home in Thomasville, Georgia, where Robert held the position of executive vice president at Senior Life Insurance Company. In 2020, Lindsay Shiver wrote on Instagram, The key to a perfect marriage is having two imperfect people who refuse to give up on each other. So thankful for that fitness class 13 years ago that brought us together and all of the love, laughter, and life we have created ever since. I love you, babe. Born in 1985 in Georgia, Robert Shiver is currently 38 years old. Hailing from a family of substantial wealth, his father, Alan Shiver, served as the CEO of Flowers Food for over four decades until his retirement in 2019. Flowers Food is a conglomerate with a staggering net worth of $5 billion, providing Robert with a privileged upbringing in the lap of affluence. Following his graduation from Auburn University and an unsuccessful attempt to secure a spot in the NFL draft, Robert embarked on a different career path. In 2009, he joined the insurance firm Senior Life and gradually ascended the ranks. Presently, he holds a prominent executive role within the company, overseeing aspects such as recruitment, strategic growth, and personnel training. His estimated net worth stands at an impressive $9 million. Robert and his family reside in a lavish property valued at $2.5 million in Thomasville, Georgia. Additionally, they own a holiday home in the Bahamas, where they frequently split their time. This opulent lifestyle characterized by regular escapes to the Bahamas, extravagant yacht outings, and even private jet travel, has come under scrutiny due to recent developments and ensuing scandal. On February 20th, 2023, Robert placed a 911 call, expressing concerns about Lindsay's behavior and reporting that she had disconnected his cell phone. Situation that I wanted to kind of get uh, guidance on or just give you guys a heads up. Um, are you the right person to speak to on that? Um, it depends, sir, what the situation okay. is. All right, so uh, my wife just got back from out of town, and I uh, believe that we are heading down the road of getting divorced. She just 
cut my cell phone off um, from Verizon. She called Verizon and had my cell phone disconnected. So I'm calling on my mother's phone at the Verizon store because the only way I can get it back active is if she releases it. Mm-hmm. So uh, I have to go over to uh, our home. And with the way that she is behaving, I feel like she might try and call the police to try to set me up as soon as I get there. And I wanted to try to get out in front of it because I'm not a, a risk of, you know, doing anything crazy. I'm just trying to go to my house and if I need to pack my stuff and leave, I can pack my stuff and leave. Um, but my kids are there and, you know, I don't want it to be presented as she goes and screams bloody murder, calls the police over nothing to try to have me uh, carried off in a police car. Is there a, the police will usually, like if you want an escort to pack like personal belongings or something, they'll stand by for like 15 minutes. But if it, you're like trying to get all of your stuff or something, it's going to take longer than that. You usually have to go through the sheriff's department and make arrangements to go over there and have a deputy go with you. Well, nothing is um, sense or said where I can't go over to my home. I'm just okay. really concerned about her trying to set me up, you know, when I get on property. Mm-hmm. I don't want her to try to uh, play this game of she's a victim when I haven't done anything. Yeah. So if, if she calls the police and says, my husband is irate, can you please come over here? Mm-hmm. And the law comes over there. What is the risk of me getting carted off in a police car in front of my kids. I can't answer that question for you, sir. Most of the time, they're just going to ask one of you to leave the property to de-escalate things. I can have somebody give you a call. What is your address? Is there a, the police will usually, like if you want an escort to pack like personal belongings or something, they'll stand by for like 15 minutes. But if it, you're like trying to get all of your stuff or something, it's going to take longer than that. You usually have to go through the sheriff's department and make arrangements to go over there and have a deputy go with you. During this initial call, it seemed as though Robert may have been attempting to preemptively contact the police before Lindsay did, possibly to establish a narrative where she appeared to be the one with erratic behavior. While this is an observation and interpretation, it does raise questions about the dynamics of their relationship at that time. On April 30th, a frantic call to 911 was made by Robin Shiver, Lindsay's mother-in-law. Yes, yes, I need the police, please, to be sent to my house daughter-in-law who's going through a divorce and she's following me right now and I know she does have a pistol possibly in her car and she is threatening that we will not get to see her kids because my son is on his way back from having been out of town with the kids. Okay, is your and call at that location right now? She's on my tail following me right now. What kind of she's not, in? She's, she's not well and her mother told me to call y'all because they've talked to her and they said she is really crazy. She's not well and she's on I don't know what kind of drugs. How old is she, ma'am? She's 35. 35? Yes, ma'am. And what is your name, ma'am? My name is Robin Shiver. And what did, what is she so upset about because your son took the kids and went out of town? Well, they're going through a divorce. Uh-huh. And she went to the Bahamas and just got back in town Friday night. Uh-huh. And my son has had the boys, the three boys are with him. And they're coming back to town to see their mom because they still live in the same house. However, she's lost it thinking that we're keeping the kids away from her and we're not. He was coming home. Okay, do you know but, if she take, if she uses drugs or if she, does she have any diagnosed medical problems? She does. She's got some issues, but she's taken Adderall. Uh-huh. And I, I don't know what else she's been taking these last four days. She was in the Bahamas from Tuesday to Friday. And we're afraid she could have gotten a hold of something down there to make her so erratic today. But she is mentally not well. We've seen that for the last several months. Alan, will you call Robert and tell him that she's still behind me, but don't talk out loud because he, he was taking the kids to the house and I don't want the police to get there at the same time. And that's my husband. Is We're not, Alan, we're not. They're going to show up at the house and they're going to get her. She reported that her soon-to-be ex-daughter-in-law was allegedly harassing her and expressed a deep sense of panic. In the disturbing scene, Robin occupied the driver's seat of her white Lexus parked at a gas station with her husband, Alan Shiver, the former CEO of the multi-billion dollar bakery company Flowers Foods, seated in the back. 
During the call, Robin informed the dispatcher that Lindsay had allegedly threatened her life and possessed a firearm. She further revealed that Lindsay had been in the Bahamas over the weekend, while their son Robert had custody of their children. Robin accused Lindsay of being under the influence of drugs, summoning law enforcement, and asserting with certainty that someone is armed can be considered reckless. Such a claim potentially jeopardizes Lindsay's safety, as police typically approach situations involving an armed individual differently than those without firearms. And in the police cam, you can hear Lindsay saying she is not carrying a firearm and further welcoming the police officers to search her to prove is telling the truth. On the way back this morning, they were in Wigham 20, 30 minutes ago. Mm -hmm. 23 they were times home, out. And then I get the message yes, that they're dropping, he's dropping them with his parents who have no rights. Okay. So as a witness for me, that's why I called y'all to mm -hmm. meet me at his parents' house. You called? I called, called first. Okay. This morning, and then I've been on the phone with the attorney and trying to dial them to ask them where the kids were and where they were meeting them so that I could okay, call y'all to let you know. Because I told you it was my call this morning. Okay. So they called and said that you were following them and harassing them. And that's, that's why. Not, that's not the so. truth. I was just trying to see where they were going to meet my kids if I needed to call you to tell you it was the gas station or the house. I promise this is all well before y'all were called by them. What time did you call dispatch? Let's see. Called a lot of people this morning now at 1238. Okay. okay, so that was probably the, that might have been the original call then. I don't know if there's no, I mean, there's no crime here, so we're not. But where are my kids? Uh, I don't know. It must be, it got to be with your husband. If, uh, Which is what, just frolicking around and can until he drops them with them? They were saying that you were following them, obviously, and that you got a gun, which what? isn't illegal. It doesn't no, I don't It though. doesn't matter, though. But I don't. And, oh, my God. Yeah. Oh so, God. she, mother-in-law, something car. is, she's freaking out, apparently. She's but, hypomanic. But, she has but, a mental issue. All yeah. three of the people in the car have a mental issue. Don't they? Yeah. They don't need my kids. Yeah. Yeah, they're saying the same thing. Footage showing Lindsay calmly explaining her perspective to another responding officer is released to present her side of the story. Lindsay stated that her husband was supposed to return their children from a visit to her mother's house, but had not done so. Her husband was unresponsive to her phone calls, raising concerns that he might be taking their sons to her in-laws without her consent. At the time of the calls, the children were not with Robin or Lindsay, but were, in fact, in the custody of Robert, who also called 911 during the altercation to report his concerns about Lindsay. Several days later, on May 2nd, Lindsay filed a motion with the court, requesting that her husband be held in contempt for his actions during the incident. In her filing, Lindsay asserted that Robert had taken their children out of town for the weekend and had refused, for a significant period, to return them to their marital residence until law enforcement intervention was necessary. Additionally, she raised grievances about his restricting her access to financial resources and their private jet. These incidents provide a glimpse into the fractures that had already formed within their marriage. Let me provide some context by delving into the events leading up to these crucial 911 calls. Beneath the veneer of their seemingly perfect family life, there were underlying issues that had escaped the public eye. It appears that Robert had started harboring suspicions that his wife was involved in an extramarital affair. To confirm his suspicions, Robert took the step of hiring a private investigator to monitor Lindsay's activities eventually uncovering evidence of the alleged affair. It is alleged that Lindsay had been romantically involved with a man named Terence Bethel, a 28-year-old Bahamian employed at Grabber's Bar and Grill on the island. In response to this revelation, Robert swiftly initiated divorce proceedings on April 5, 2023, citing adulterous acts as the grounds for divorce. He also sought custody of their children, ownership of their $2.5 million residential property, inclusive of its furnishings and possession of his vehicle. Additionally, he requested a restraining order, alleging that Lindsay was harassing him. The following day, April 6th, Lindsay herself also filed for divorce, 
She contended that the extramarital affair had commenced after they had already separated, pointing to emotional, physical, and psychological abuse suffered at the hands of Robert as her primary reason for divorce. She further claimed that he had physically assaulted her in the presence of their children on multiple occasions. Lindsay sought full custody of their kids, expressed her desire to continue residing in their marital home, and requested alimony and child support. Notably, during these legal proceedings, Robert and Lindsay were still residing in the same residential property. In April, Robert contacted the police once more, this time to report an unusual delivery to both his office and his parents' residence. I do not have an emergency right now, um, but I was wanting to just kind of put you guys on notice of something that has is, is been kind of odd. Mm -hmm. Are you the right person to talk to or do I need to be transferred to a dispatch or what? This is dispatch. Okay, so the day at work, um, I had a letter delivered to me, and it was a USB thumb drive. And it didn't have a return to sender address or anything, and so I plugged the thumb drive in, and it had all these pictures of my wife on it from about two weeks ago when we were out of the country. The same thumb drive was delivered to my parents' house uh, about a mile away in an unmarked envelope. And it looks like, glancing through, that it was almost like a, a private investigator. But we have spoken with everybody that we know, mm -hmm. and they've all confirmed that they, they don't know what we're talking about. Okay. So I don't know if we have, like, a potential stalker or, you know, some, some lunatic that's in town that has been following my wife around. Okay. But we just wanted to let you guys know it, it might do, or we would like it if you guys could maybe, you know, just make a couple of uh, passes by our home tonight. We just kind of went through and checked the whole house ourselves. Okay, do but you want to get a report as well? I don't think we need a report just yet because we we're trying to find out more information on who took the pictures and we're talking to some people to have some security cameras to see if we can get a picture of the individual first. Okay, were the pictures taken while you were out of the country, or were they taken while you were here? They were taken while we were out of the country in the Bahamas, and for spring break a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. and they just showed up at my office today uh, that was mailed to me, but then an envelope was also, excuse me, an unmarked um, envelope was placed in my parents' okay. mailbox with the same thumb drive. Yes, sir. Okay, you want them to kind of ride uh, ride around your residence a few times throughout the night? Yeah, if that's okay. They can kind of patrol both sides, I think, would be just some extra reassurance that, you know, everything's okay. We've got our alarm on. Okay, yes, sir. All right. Everybody's good, so but just wanted to see if you guys could help with that. Yes, sir. We'll, have, we'll definitely have them do that. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. On April 12th, he informed law enforcement that he had received a USB flash drive via mail, and the same flash drive had been delivered to his parents in an unmarked envelope. The drive contained photographs of Lindsay, taken just two weeks earlier, while the family was on vacation, out of the country. During the call, Robert insisted that he did not wish to file an official report, which appeared rather perplexing. Despite having evidence that his wife was being surveilled, his reluctance to make an official report raises questions. It seemed unusual given that a number of credible sources have reported that Robert had hired a private investigator to monitor Lindsay's activities. This contradiction prompts the question of why he pretended not to know the source of those pictures, especially when he had information to the contrary. On July 16th, Lindsay made an urgent call to the police, reporting a domestic dispute and requesting assistance. The following footage captures the events that unfolded upon the arrival of law enforcement. What's going on? Y'all are separated or what, what's the, the deal? In the driveway stands former beauty queen Lindsay Shiver. She had called police to claim her husband Robert pushed her as the family was packing to head off to the Bahamas. What, he denies it. We have filed for divorce. Okay. Living in the same house. It's hell on earth as you can imagine. Just okay. got super aggressive and that's when I called immediately because he's been physical before and I'm just not... Okay. Not so, doing that. So are you just wanting to leave? Or is he supposed to be going with you? Yeah, we're supposed to be going with our kids. In the video, Lindsay alleges that they had initially planned a trip to the Bahamas as a family. However, Robert had a change of heart regarding her accompanying him and the children to the island. 
When Lindsay refused to stay behind, the situation escalated, resulting in an alleged physical altercation. It appears perplexing that she reported this abuse while still expressing a desire to travel with her estranged husband, the same person she alleges abused her just moments before. Even the responding officer offered counsel against vacationing with her husband amid a contentious divorce. Body cam footage, recorded in the driveway of their opulent $2.5 million marital residence in Thomasville, Georgia, captured Robert informing the officers of their ongoing divorce and Lindsay's intention to visit her boyfriend. She sent a message saying that she's going to change her plans and now get on the airplane with me and the kids to go to the Bahamas. She's going to go to her boyfriend and me and the kids are going to our house. He expressed concerns that it would distress their children if their mother were to fly to the Caribbean with them, only to disappear with another man. In the end, Robert proceeded with the private jet to the Bahamas, while Lindsay had no other option but to opt for a regular commercial flight to the same destination. On July 16, 2023, Bahamian authorities were conducting an investigation into a burglary at Grabber's Bar and Grill, where Terence Bethel, the man whom Lindsay is alleged to be having an affair with, was employed. During the course of their burglary inquiry, police scrutinized Bethel's phone and uncovered text messages that allegedly alluded to a sinister plot to harm Robert Shiver, orchestrated at his wife's behest. These incriminating messages involved communication between Lindsay, Terence Bethel, and another individual named Farron Newbold, a 29-year-old who was purportedly hired as the hitman. The text provided explicit details about their plan to lure Robert to the island and carry out a shooting. It's important to note that Newbold, a structural engineer and the son of a well-known local politician, vehemently maintains his innocence, asserting that the case is not what it seems. Bethel has also stated unequivocally that he harbored no intentions of causing harm to his lover's husband and that his ongoing relationship with Shiver was never concealed. Photographs allegedly sent by Lindsay Shiver to a Bahamian individual described as a hitman depicted her ex-football player husband in the company of an unidentified blonde woman. These images were taken mere hours after Robert had visited the local night spot grabbers, where Terence Bethel was employed as a bartender. It was alleged that the affluent insurance executive was not on a romantic rendezvous that night, but had spontaneously joined the woman and her friends for drinks, as it was a farewell gathering. These very photographs were the ones that Shiver forwarded to Farron Newbold, along with a chilling text message stating, Kill him. On July 21, 2023, Lindsay Shiver, Terence Bethel, and Farron Newbold were apprehended by the police and charged with conspiracy to commit murder. They were transported from Guana to Nassau and subsequently appeared in court on July 30, 2023. During this court appearance, they did not enter a plea and were ordered to be remanded to prison. Later on, Bethel and Newbold were released on a $20,000 bond. However, Lindsay couldn't secure her release due to lacking a Bahamas address. Upon learning of Lindsay's arrest and the charges against her, Robert returned to the United States. It was later revealed that their Bahamian residence was owned by Robert's family and not registered in their names as a married couple. Consequently, Lindsay was transferred to Fox Hill Prison and remained there for 19 days. To facilitate Lindsay's release, her parents traveled to the Bahamas, rented an apartment, and submitted a lease agreement to Bahamian authorities. Only after this action, Lindsay was granted bail in the amount of $100,000 on August 9th, 2023. Bahamas, that is where an American wife and mother of three is now out on bond after allegedly plotting to have her husband killed. As part of her bail conditions, Lindsay must wear a GPS ankle monitor, confine herself to her residence between 8 p.m. and 5 a.m., and report to local authorities three times a week. Lindsay is also required to remain in Nassau while awaiting an October court date and is prohibited from contacting her estranged husband or approaching within 100 feet of him. An attorney representing the trio downplayed the gravity of the alleged plan, asserting that Shiver's alleged accomplices were far from executing the scheme and the situation was blown out of proportion. Lindsay Shiver is scheduled to make her next court appearance on October 5th. Let's now consider the potential impact of these text messages in a court of law. It's important to note that people often vent their frustrations, and the full context of these messages will be taken into account to determine Lindsay and her associates' true intentions. It's not uncommon for individuals to express extreme anger or resentment, and mere threats don't always translate into actual harm. 
the prosecution will need to establish beyond a reasonable doubt that there was a genuine intent to commit murder. In legal terms, for the murder for hire to be considered official, there would have to be evidence of specific details shared with the alleged hitman, such as the location of a firearm, the target's schedule, and facilitating entry into the house. Additionally, any discussions related to payment. If these conditions exist and can be proven, it could further indicate a planned criminal act, rather than the impulsive actions of someone undergoing a bitter divorce. The profile of the alleged hitman, Farron Newbold, as an engineer from a politically connected family, an aspiring musician living in a newly built smart home and driving a $500,000 Mercedes SUV, may be used to argue against his involvement, as it might suggest financial stability. Therefore, the motive for his participation would need to be carefully scrutinized. Before concluding, it's crucial to include an additional piece of information. I intentionally held off on this detail to prevent confusion during the earlier part of this video. ABC News managed to obtain an arrest report from Bahamian authorities. This report outlines how Robert himself went to the police station on July 21st to report his concerns. He expressed a belief that his life and the lives of his children were in danger, suspecting his wife of plotting to harm him. It's worth noting that this report adds a layer of complexity to the situation. Based on this police report, law enforcement somehow searched Terence Bethel's phone. This search ultimately led to the discovery of the text messages discussing Lindsay's alleged plan to have Robert killed. Admittedly, the sequence of events appears somewhat senseless. Questions arise regarding how Robert came to be aware of this plot in the first place. Does this mean that the reports suggesting that the police stumbled upon this evidence while investigating a break-in are not accurate? In light of these circumstances, it's challenging to make sense of the situation, unless if Robert had Lindsay's phone tapped. Remember he had initially hired a private investigator to have her followed? Perhaps through him tapping her phone, he did realize that Thee was a massage plotting to have him killed, and then he decided to involve the police. However, the precise details surrounding the discovery of this evidence remain elusive. This case is undeniably intriguing, and there are numerous unanswered questions. The truth may only become clear as the trial proceedings unfold. Don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss future updates on the case. Do you believe that Lindsay really intended to kill her husband? Or was she just venting out her frustrations? And if she was, how did the so-called hitman get involved? Let's continue the discussion in the comments down below. Thank you for watching TCC. Stay safe out there.